It's here, finally. All right, there it is in all its glory. So I just got it in the mail. Uh, it came UPS, it took a couple days, but we got it. Um, so it is basically all ready to go um, for the most part. Gotta do some modifications. Of course, we got the car up in the air, um, clutches in there, belt housings in there, all that sort of stuff. So we just have to complete out some more items on our list. Basically, we need to just uh, prep the T56, and then we'll work on the clutch release bearing, get the air gap set, all that sort of stuff, bleed it. Uh, well, we'll install the transmission, then we'll bleed it, and then we'll work on drive shaft, exhaust, wide band or two stuff, um, and shifter, and then we'll secure all the stuff I loosened up underneath the hood. Um, but yeah, it's a very short list. We're running out of parts. We basically just have a few items for the cross member, um, hardware bolts, um, the shifter stuff itself, the cross brace, got some fluid, um, some brake fluid over there. And uh, yeah, um, shifter is right over here. So they got the sticky shifter um, pretty much ready to go. Um, put some RTV on that. And then we have the release bearing, as you can see. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started with this bad boy. Um, we'll first uh, start modifying the uh, transmission itself. Um, and I know we gotta do a little cutting, clearancing. I think it's this bolt right here. Just gotta take off probably about three eighths of an inch of the material here. So I'll hit that with a cutoff wheel. Um, we're gonna take this little cap off here and there's a little like rubber like diaphragm in there that can come out um, From what I've heard from other people uh, Ryan on pure function for instance Says this kind of will get clogged up and then what will happen is like the fluid will start to come out through the shifter somehow I'd rather be safe than sorry, but we're gonna do that. We'll replace the shifter as well um, it's a, It feels very nice tactile, you know um, but yeah, it's not gonna work for us because of the position. Here's one of the sensors right here. I think this one is for the speed sensor. And then there's another one on here. Maybe it's this guy taped up over here. That'll be for the uh, reverse light. And then this lockout solenoid right here will have to get modified. And it looks like it comes with a nice little plug, so I don't think we gotta worry about that. Um, in Joel's older videos, he mentioned that this uh, gives you one, but I think uh, instead, trying to putting on a little plastic piece I just put on this little uh, cover here since probably most of these that get sold are not using the uh, mechanical speed uh, uh, speed whatever daily so anyway we'll go ahead and start working right, guys so I'm gonna be making a slight modification here as you can see I pulled this little clip out here for the emergency brake the drive shaft runs down this way and um, one of the other guys uh, Ryan on the pure function um, YouTube page uh, pointed this out to me uh, previously. Basically, what happens is, if I can focus in on here, if you see this prong right here that I'm pointing at and this one on this side, they hang a little too low and they can actually catch the drive shaft if you like wheel hop or you know doing anything aggressive like that um, and actually gouge the drive shaft. So what I'm gonna do is two things. I'm gonna grind this little tab and this little tab right here that are hanging down and I'm also gonna take this clip and 90 degree bend it so that it will slide up and in and kind of come out towards the rear of the car. Um, so what I'm gonna do to do that is just gonna take it and put it into um, my vise over here and probably just um, you know grab it with the pliers and just bend it like that or smack it with a hammer but I don't want to mess up these prongs too too much here so I'll probably put it in this little plastic uh, this uh, plastic piece that kind of holds it in the vise and doesn't gnarl up the actual uh, clip itself so um, I'm gonna do that um, what I'll do is I'll use a grinder which I have right here um, to work on those two tabs underneath the body of the car. This should take two minutes, and I think it's just a nice little safety thing to do. As you can see, I uh, lopped it off pretty uh, level there. Um, took off some material, maybe about uh, a little over an eighth of an inch uh, of total material, which I think is all you really need. Um, but you know, you just wanna be careful in here that you're not uh, touching this uh, cable here. Um, you don't wanna lose your e-brake cable. Um, so it's, uh, it's nice and level now. I also took uh, that clip and I just put it in my vise with the, the, the nylon or the plastic um, uh, vise uh, jaw uh, protector so that I didn't want to deform the metal too much. Um, but you can see it just 
slides right back up in there and then I'll tap it with a hammer nice and in and it'll probably actually make this more 90 degrees straight out. So I think that just a little bit of clearance there is gonna be good peace of mind. You know, you wanna keep an eye on the drive shaft just in case it's rubbing on anything else. But you know, again, another shout out to Ryan on Pure Function uh, YouTube page. Um, that guy, I've learned so much just watching his stuff, um, especially with his conversion as well. Although he was converting from a, I think it was like an R154 to the uh, T56. So not everything applied, but I did learn quite a bit from him so far. So definitely check out his YouTube page. I owe a lot to him for that. Um, but yeah, we're gonna go ahead and tap that guy in and then we'll basically be done at this point. Um, the only other things I really got to work on is the wiring stuff. Um, all the stuff inside the car is pretty much done. Um, the tunnel is all painted, as you can see. Uh, I hit it with some spray paint. Um, looks pretty good up in there. Just getting the wiring wrapped up. Watch Joel's video. He kind of walks through these uh, pretty, pretty painlessly. Um, I went and connected the um, reverse lights right here. He tells you exactly which pins you need to go off of on the main connector here. There's also two that you need to uh, solder together um, and you know tape them up so that they're out of the way and they'll always see the cars in reverse. Um, but these are uh, the lights themselves. And then um, I just taped up all the ends like he suggested. Um, I took the red and blue wire here, which will go is the signal wire for the Dakota Digital, which I already have installed up there. I'm just using some of this loom. I couldn't find nicer stuff than this, but this stuff's always worked out well for me. Um, poked a small hole in the tunnel here, um, and a grommet is in there as well, so this is not you know coming loose. Um, and um, just loomed it up. This will be uh, for the main speed sensor on the trans itself. So it's gonna go in about this location. Don't have a trans yet. So if I need to shorten these up, I'll shorten them up. But, um, and then I just left enough um, length for another blue cable. And I have it kind of going up the same wire harness here just to kind of make it a cleaner install. All right, so just a quick update. So what I've done is um, I've gotten the um, master cylinder, or not the master cylinder, throw up bearing on here. I did all my modifications to the transmission, shaved this, um, installed the sicky shifter. Uh, what else did we do? We modified the spring in this guy. We took off like a full rung of it and reassembled it. Um, just so you know too, if you don't have ni nice uh, snap ring pliers, you might wanna get some. I did this with a cheapy like $5 one with like the little heads that you have to put in, but I had to bend them all up just to get the thing out. So if it's only a one-time thing, you could probably get away with the cheapy ones and just make them work. But if you have nice ones, it'll probably make that a lot smoother and faster. Um, the only other things I think I've done, let's see, I took some tape off of this. So this is for uh, one of the sensors. I think this is the, uh, reverse lights and that one back there is your speed sensor so all in all it's pretty ready um, i measured the air gap um, in multiple locations and they're all slightly different reading maybe they're off uh, a couple uh, hundredths um, uh, of a millimeter but I, I basically measured from multiple points and then did an average of all of them as well as doing the same on the bell housing and I'm at about uh, four and three quarter millimeter right now it's funny because I'm using metric and standard but anyways 4.75 or 4.74 is actually what it averaged out to be millimeter air gap between where this is going to sit uh, up against the uh, furthest out point of the fingers on the clutch so um, yeah, I think this thing is pretty much ready to go in. Oh, I also did, I uh, got, I got this little cap off. You just gotta take a screwdriver and kind of pry up these little tabs over here and then it'll eventually pop off, take the rubber diaphragm out and toss it and put it back on and just pinch it down with some, um, I use some vice grips that you know, we're able to kind of pinch on here and pinch on here. This just kind of sits up here loose, but um, you know, as long as it's pinched on there, it won't fall off. But yeah, so that's where we're currently at. Um, so the car is pretty much all ready to go. I'm going to maybe loosen up the motor mounts up front to, to, to help lean the motor back a little bit. Um, we'll just kind of see how things, how things sit there. Um, but yeah, that should be able to give me enough lean to get, um, get the car back enough so that the trans um, will slide onto you know, the bell housing. I'll take out all, all the bolts, of course, first. Uh, else it's going to be interesting fighting that in the 
clutch alignment tool. So yeah, that'll be next. So <clears throat> I stayed up a little bit to get the trans in and I had to play with it. So there we are. I it's I don't have any clutch fluid in it. I don't have the drive shaft in, but I got the trans in and I got the shifter in, which is the funnest part of owning a manual car, baby. So there you go. It's pretty damn crisp. So Okay, so we are basically done. I stayed up quite late last night to get the car all buttoned up. Um, I got the trans in by myself, which was a pain in the ass, but at least I had a lift, so it made it a lot more tolerable. But yeah, we uh, buttoned up everything uh, uh, under the hood. Um, reconnected the battery. I tested it earlier, but yeah, the trans is in there, if you can see. And the drive shaft, exhaust, everything is back up. Um, <clears throat> Uh, no major issues, just kind of a pain in the ass getting that trans in there. I definitely had to lean the motor back. So there's uh, up underneath the um, uh, motor, there's two motor mount bolts. I just loosened those up and it allowed me to put a bottle jack underneath the crank pulley and kind of help lift that up to rake the rear of the motor downward at an angle so I can put the transmission up through the bell housing, through the clutch. Um, that did work out pretty well. Um, <coughs> it was still kind of a pain in the ass to do it, but it, it did work out. The problem is, is that the shifter um, will hit the top of the tunnel or within that that um, tunnel um, cover that uh, Joel sells. So you have to keep that in mind when you are um, installing it that the motor needs to lean back a bit. So um, all that worked out pretty well. As you can see, we got the pedals all uh, hooked up and everything. The shifter's in place. Everything is pretty much good to go. All right, so I've got the car out. Um, I did take it for a quick spin around the neighborhood. It does drive very, very well. I got to get used to driving a stick now. <laughs> it's been a little while, but um, it's driving really well. Um, I'm surprised at how quiet the clutch is when you're idling and you, um, you know, in neutral and even shifting. And it's it, it's a very nice and quiet clutch sound, um, and it has good grip. I did set the pedal stop. I don't know if you can see it quite up there, but I do have a little uh, bolt in there um, and have the stop set. I might actually uh, take that length and um, uh, uh, increase it a little bit. Uh, you know, I'm gonna drive it around a little bit and get a feel for it, but I do have a stop in there just so I don't hyperextend anything with the bearing or um, the, the clutch master itself. But yeah, overall, I mean, it's a super clean install. Um, you know, I'll get some driving impression on it. Um, one thing I did notice is I have Pro Efi in this car. And granted, I'm new to all this stuff, but I didn't realize that I think Pro Efi calculates uh, speed a little differently than a stock car. Um, so I probably didn't need to decode a digital box uh, after all, but live and learn, you know what I mean? My, my speedo did look like it was pretty, pretty correct, maybe off a mile or two uh, per hour, but nothing too uh, significant. So I don't think I have to worry about anything along those lines. But yeah, this install worked out really, really well. I think if you had a buddy help you over the weekend, you could definitely knock it out pretty quickly. Um, you know, it's it, it took me, you know, a little while, but it's because I work kind of slow and I, I only do a little bit at a time when, when time permits. It's the best part about having a lift is I can kind of just come out here and do those things much easier. But anyway, uh, let me get some driving impression of it um, and some in-car video for you guys. Alrighty, so we're taking it out for a drive. Um, not beating on it or anything, just normal driving. It drives fantastic. Um, you know, it, it has really good clutch feel to it. Very tactile on the shifter. It drives phenomenally. So um, I'm gonna probably just do the normal break-in, like 500 miles on this, see how it does. Right now, I'm in fifth gear, about 45 miles an hour and about 1600 RPM. Um, I do have the 427 gear in the back, so I'm just gonna see how that works for me. I might go down to a 408, but the 427 is what I had. It's an open diff, so um, I'm gonna have my TRD rebuilt anyway, and maybe use a 427 or use a 408 if I get my hands on one. But overall, it's a good drive, very easy uh, to shift. I thought.
thought the shifter was gonna be really, really stiff, but when you're actually driving it, it's not bad. Um, just the sicky shifter, when, when you're playing with it itself, it does have a feeling like it's um, just super stiff. Um, but in the car, it actually feels very nice. Um, we'll see if my bolts end up backing out a little. Um, I know that's happened with uh, Ryan and a few other folks as well, but you know, we'll just kind of see how this works out. But right now I'm pretty happy with it. It's driving great. I've got my mile per hour is working. Um, everything's functioning as it should. Now I've got to get this car retuned. Um, I'll do that at some point in time once I have the, the TRD back in the rear and I figure out what gear I want to go with. But overall, I mean, it drives it drives great. I, I don't know how a, a V160 car drives or R154 or any, really, any Toyota or Getrag trans. I, this is my only experience with this T56. But, um, you know, comparing it to some others, it feels a little notchier than maybe like a BMW trans. Um, I think the BMW trans are very soft and very, very nice. I had a 135i. Um, but this is by no means a, um, a hard car to drive. I, I do feel like it's it's pretty doable. Um, but yeah, uh, so far I'm pretty happy with it. We'll drive it around a little bit more and, and see how she does. I'd like to get into some boost on this, but right now I'm just gonna do some easy driving, heading up to the gas station. And, so, all right, I'll keep you guys posted. But so far, very much enjoying this trans, uh, enjoying this car. I'm at an idle right now. You don't hear any clutch chatter at all. It's super quiet. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm very impressed with this setup so far. So we'll see where it goes. Thank you guys for checking out this series. I hope it helps you guys out a little bit. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to you know leave them in the comments below. If you have any concerns of anything that I've done or like that you know let me know I would be more than happy to like, answer any of those things I'm pretty transparent about this I've never manually swapped a car before I've never even installed a transmission or bled a clutch but this whole process was honestly very easy uh, much easier than maybe people think um, you know you just follow all the directions you watch other people's videos you get a good sense of like what you need to do mechanically and you can tackle it. Now, I had a lift that makes life a lot easier, but it was just me doing this install. You have a buddy that's willing to give you a hand. I'm sure you guys can knock it out over a weekend on jack stands. I mean, a lot of other guys have, including um, Ryan from Pure Function. So, you know, by all means, I think this is a very doable uh, swap, and this is gonna bring a lot of smiles on my face. Take care, guys.